welcome to breakfast with milo i'm here today with a feminine did i get that right <laughs> and ogene yuma ojigoro wow i just have a round of applause <laughs> <laughs> well done it's nice to have Efe back if he has been here before when um, we discussed and you know um something around the judiciary area really and, and he's back here on the same topic uh, if he's an expert in this area it's <laughs> him. <laughs> and it's nice to have you man so basically we'll be discussing um the independence of the judiciary in light of the jison strike as uh, judiciary judiciary staff union of nigeria if i'm correct and yes. the ongoing strike so i mean before we, before we delve into the strike and all like what's your opinion on uh, the importance of the judiciary for your governance okay so for me i definitely believe that the in, in <laughs> Sorry, I definitely believe that the independence of the judiciary is very important because in a democratic society, we need checks and balance. And so if the judiciary cannot actually carry out their duties and their functions independently, then there's going to be a problem because the executive can pretty much get away with anything and with no one to check them when they carry out their actions. So yes, I, I believe it's something very important and every meaningful Nigerian must must um, clamor for it, yes. Yeah, I mean, judicial independence is, I mean, it's non-negotiable. You know, apart from even it being theoretically important, it's something that is part of our governance structure in Nigeria, the constitution says so. It's, and for me, like you must say, you know, checks and balances is so important because you must be able to guarantee that judiciary will execute its function without fear or favor and without any interference from the executive or from the legislature. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite crucial to any governance, any, any government in any state in the world. So, yeah. All right. Um, and so, um, can you just like give us a background? Like, I would a lot of our viewers aren't lawyers. And so, can you just give like a background to what caused the strike and how it's well um, so I mean what is clear to me is that let's start from what's agreed the constitution says judiciary should be independent and it, it talks about financial autonomy of the judiciary to the extent that money used to the judiciary should be paid to the judiciary um, sometime I think it was 2011 I'm not really sure anymore but there was the fourth alteration to the constitution what it did was to amend section 121 of the constitution to say that um, money is due to state judiciaries we paid directly to heads of courts um, <coughs> after the alteration was done nobody implemented literally nobody implemented it and there was a committee set up by the president that's president Buhari to look into the implementation and they found that apart from the FCT there was no other state that implemented it what that did was that what that led to was that Buhari then passed executive order number 10 last year um, directing that basically trying to enforce the autonomy of the judiciary by saying that it would be a first line charge from the federation street to the heads of court you know but i understand that there's a dispute as to the validity of that you know um obviously they're challenging this executive order in courts but nonetheless regardless of the challenges in place nobody's still complying so essentially what the body striking is doing which is the judiciary union um, of nigeria judiciary staff union is to say implement financial autonomy or the courts remain shut. That's the story. I mean, you might have something to add. Yes, so just to add to what Ife has said, um, this is not the first time they're striking. So they had another strike, a previous strike in 2015. And the result of that strike was um, they had actually challenged uh, the various state govern governors to court. Um, Jusun had instituted an action, as well as the then MBA president, Ulisa Agbakuba, and the court had held the same position in the three different cases that the words, uh, the wordings of uh, the constitution was expressed and clear that the judiciary should have financial autonomy. Like, when we read the provisions of um, Section 81 sub 3 and Section 121 sub 3, there's no room for disputes. It's clear that um, monies that are paid to the consolidated revenue funds, which should be paid to the heads of court. And so the court had interpreted it as that. And based on um, 
the judgment of the courts, Jusun had requested or had insisted that um, the executive comply with that provision. But Nigeria being what it is, they found ways to dance around the judgment, to dance around everything, and which led to the 2015 strike. Those cases happened in 2014, and then by January 2015, I think from the 5th of January 2015, they started a strike, and then they were promised the same thing we have now. Everything is going to be resolved. Don't worry, it's, it will get better. We're working on it. And I think by like 24th of January, they resolved and uh, called off the strike. And this is how many years later? And we're still six years later, and they have still refused to implement what they promised in 2015, what the president has stated by virtue of his executive order. And yes, so I think we're at a point where the strike is actually needed. Right. Um, so um, I was going to ask, like, um, what ex if there was a strike in 2015 and, you know, people didn't, like the government or the executive didn't respond. And uh, so for the question for me is, why did they go on for six years before they came back to come and strike on the same issue again? Like. So I mean, this this is, of course for me it's like a recurrent thing across different, and so that's the thing we sit down here all the time and we talk about these issues, and for some reason like we don't even mean to talk about, like the country or the governors. We just want to talk about one issue, and it just you know <laughs> reveals it goes back like you know, <laughs> it's serious problems like you know, Nigeria is a body and like, you know you think you are dealing with an issue at the kidney and then yeah let's go ah mm. liver and stuff like that because. This is the same issue with ASU, you know. They keep striking to only strike again. <laughs> you get like, and that's that's always been the case. Every single one of us when we were in school, we it was it was almost like a no-brainer. You you definitely had some years of your edu your life in school shaved off naturally by default that you were going to spend at home for strike purposes. I know, like in my time, I think over hundred days <laughs> to strike. I'm sure if he must have had his own to like six months, you know. Well, yeah, do you understand? I mean so like. Cons consistently like that. So like what's the point of striking? Like what's, what's the effect if you <coughs> strike over a long period of time? And in, during those periods, th there's usually detrimental effects from strikes. Like for now, as the judiciary is on strike, I can imagine people that are stuck. I can imagine what's happening. Like even when the judiciary, when, when it's even functioning, it's not even functioning right. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? People don't get t um, cases on time. They don't get people stuck in prison or stuff like that. People don't need to get bailed out. So it's like, do you really th like why? What's the point of the first strike if you didn't achieve anything and then you wait six years? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you know, my my view is, even from the get go, I always see, and I probably haven't said this so many times because I'm scared of the backlash. First time I'm scared you're, of you're something. Always <laughs> you're, scared of, you're always saying you're scared of backlash, but yeah. then you still go ahead and say yes because I have to say let them know things. And then I, I, I sense you're not scared of backlash. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he is. But yeah, the point is to start with, the only reason why we're striking is is because we're failed states and you can quit me anywhere. In a state where things function and function properly. I'm failing sorry. or failed? Failed, failed. states. Oh, failed. There's, there's we, no we failing states past anymore. Failing past since. failing. <laughs> you know, in a, in, a, in a state where things function properly, if an arm of government has a problem with another arm of government, there are ways to check them. Right. That's the whole principle of checks and balances. That's the whole principle of separation of powers. It works that if the executive is abusing its past executive, there's another arm of government that can check it. Right. So it goes around. Ideally, what I would say is that if the constitution, which is the soul of our democracy, prescribes financial term for judiciary and the governors refuse to implement that, that's an impeachable offense in my opinion. I see mm. no reason why the heads of courts should not petition to the National Assembly and to the state's House of Assembly to have those governors removed and impeached. It's just my view. Right. <laughs> How many governors are you talking about here? <laughs> maybe when maybe when thirty five of maybe when thirty five of them start the process, they will not implement and <laughs> get back to work. Board. <laughs> the problem is just that Nigeria is is failed, and nobody in the legislature has the guts, has the guts, to do anything that goes contrary to what the governor says. In Lagos, is even damning because at the time when they were appointed, um, say for one member of the House of Assembly, all of them were APC members. Now that one member who was a PDP member. I've been informed that he defected to APC. So the, AP, the House of Assembly in Lagos is controlled by one party. Wow. 
exclusively. Now, how would this one party go against the wish of their governor, who is a party member? So are they serving the party? Are they serving the people? I mean, if it's, it's just sad that we now have to strike. If not, the strike is not proper. And this is why the strike is now, I mean, and even, even, even what even concerns me the most about the strike is that it's not effective. And I'll tell you why it's not effective. When you strike, you do something that hurts the person that you're aiming to coerce by your actions. Right. The government doesn't care about the judiciary. If not, it won't be closed down for one month. The courts are closed down for one month across the country and nobody cares. They don't right. care. Part of my language, they don't give two shits about the court system. If they did, they won't let it close down for one day. Now, what's mm. the effect of this? I mean, you're obviously, you know, people who are in detention cannot get bail. People who um, are standing trial have to stay in jail for longer. Businesses who have, how do I say it, who have grievances to resolve can't get to the courts anymore. Injunctive, Injunctive remedies can't be sought. Your house has been, you know that thing the teachers in landlord, you see when your house has been demolished, you want to go to get an expert <laughs> order. If your house has been demolished now, you're on your own. I go and order an ISI before a judge at the Federal High Court just before the strike commenced. We asked, we were supposed to get the CTC the Monday after. This is a gun show than I said. We get CTC the Monday after. That Monday they went on strike. Where's my CTC? Where's the other nice side? All the nice side is a waste. All the money you're trying to freeze has gone. Hmm. Sorry, just to add to that. So just before the strike started, um, we actually, we were instituting um, content proceedings we had gotten judgment in our favor, and um, the opposing party had, uh, they, were getting in, they were doing some really shady things contrary to the judgment we had. So we're already instituting content proceedings because they, were, they had literally um, stalled our client's business only for us to um, file our Form 48 and try to proceed with everything and then the strike commences and our client is there just the business is stuck and there's nothing to do and so um in addition to everything if he has said i think when we look back at our past trauma as a nation right. uh, during the colonial times the whole concept of divide and conquer that is something that has always been utilized it's a skill that the government uses and so even when we look at the strike today, rather than resolve the collective issue, address what it is that we've been clamoring for, which is financial autonomy, they started picking. So they picked the Lagos State <laughs> branch, decided to offer them some incentives, and with, with the mindset that if we can disarm as many states as possible without actually resolving the problem, right. they will abandon the cause, which was almost what happened. So Lagos State came out with their own, um, with their own, will I say policy, mm -hmm. or that the courts should reopen. Open on Wednesday, Thursday, and Fridays. Op reopen partially. <laughs> So on Mondays and Tuesdays, they will honor uh, the other states and... Um, that just came out recently. Uh, so that, that, that actually happened, happened like twice. Ago. It happened it twice, but then it, it the, got the, actually the national juice soon then... Had to step in. Stepped in to stop them. Which is, which is... So when we talk about the 2015 strike and why um, it's taking so long for um, juice to do anything, we must understand that the people we are... <laughs> the people we are demanding these things from, which is the executive arm of government, they're very intelligent. They act like they're not, but they're very they intelligent. Do. They know, <laughs> like, they're, they're like chess players, so they know what moves to make. So between 2015 and now, I can, I can almost, um, I can almost guess um, all the behind the scenes they must have been doing. So we had the executive order, and when you bring out an executive order, people believe that something is being done. So let's say from 2016 or 2017, they started hearing, okay, there's going to be an executive order, we're going to do something about this. 
um, set up a committee, <laughs> which is our, f our favorite line in Nigeria, set up a committee. And then the committee looks into it, and everybody has hopes that something is being done. And then the executive order is passed. And one year after, or almost a year after, because it was passed 20th of May, 2020, and right. this is when. Mm. And nothing <laughs> has been done. Nothing has been implemented. So it just gets to a point where enough is enough. And I, I, I can totally understand the inconvenience, our clients, our colleagues, <laughs> ourselves, the inconvenience we've had to face as a result of this closure. But I also believe that it, it gets to a point where you put your foot down and you say, you know what? Yes, it's painful. Yes, we don't like this. Yes, it is shameful. Because how do you explain to your international clients that our courts, <laughs> <laughs> our courts are on strike? Oh how God. do you explain oh to them? Oh but I think it's, it's, first of all, our government, Yes. <laughs> yes, I don't really think they care about the shame. Let me disagree with you, man. Okay. Just or something. These people are not intelligent. <laughs> so I think when, Quotes if, when yeah. if time if when if time mm -hmm. to do something negative. They are very intelligent. Let, let, let me explain to you. See, because you know what you want to achieve, doesn't mean you are intelligent. What determines your intelligence is what you want to achieve and how you go about it. Let me explain to you something. See, and I make this point at the last interview, I believe. When you are looking at economies to invest money in, a functional judiciary is an indice, is a matrix. In the World Bank's doing business reports, enforcing contracts is a matrix. Right. And the World Bank recognizes that enforcing contracts will happen through courts right. and arbitral tribunals, which are supported by courts. So invariably, judiciary is, it's, it's a, it plays a primal role. Right. Now look at what Yoma said. Last year, I told the clients, because of the pandemic, we have no dates. Because of NSARS, we have to reconstitute files. We have no dates. One year around the clock, no progress on a case that was filed as far back as 2019 because of the pandemic, because of the NSARS, and because of the strike. This client, okay, first of all, it's an international law firm, we are partners with us. They will tell their clients that the Nigerian judiciary has not functioned for one year. Will that client bring business to Nigeria? This will go around the international investment community. Nobody's going to come and set up a company in Nigeria. Nobody's going to set up their business in Nigeria. They will all go to Ghana, to South Africa and whatnot. And this is what the, yeah. the, the leaders don't know. If you want to steal money, you can only steal from a country that generates money. True. If I wanted to get taxes out of you, if I wanted to get taxes out of you, <laughs> I needed to make money to get taxes out of you. If I wanted to embezzle money from Nigeria, I will pump the Nigerian people with money. They will make money, there will be income, there will be foreign investment, and I will tax them to their teeth. And I will steal from them. That's how you steal from people. Like the way they address the money, <laughs> they should hear me and they should be motivated. Yes. This is very weird. It's, <laughs> no, it's very weird, but it's a fact. Because if if you if they continue the way they are going, there will be nothing to steal anymore. And that's what we're heading for. That's the sad reality. And I can't remember the point I had to make now again. But the point is, if they keep going like this, if there's no, if there's no judiciary, there will be no investments, there will be no businesses. People who are doing good bit, good bit business now will lose money because there's no judiciary. And there will be nothing to tax. True. I already am already prior than I was last time I came here because dollars already gone up. So what are they taxing mm -hmm. my body? Mm -hmm. Is it until we we'll lose our jobs and lawyers don't have things to do anymore that mm -hmm. they would understand there's, no, there's nothing to tax And everybody is running out of the country and that's sad. Everybody. Th does that include you? <laughs> <laughs> well, almost everybody. <laughs> Allah had to, to maintain. <laughs> the is maintaining. Uh, anyway, but, I, but I, I, I mean, everything that's been said is the fact of the matter. But I think what upsets me the most is that this is not a matter for the courts. This is not a matter for us to deliberate upon. It is financial autonomy for a judiciary that is meant to be independent. It is an ABC of democracy. It should not be negotiated. Why the governors the are why the, is if, why the if struggle if that is, is beyond that me. Is the case, why was even the discussion around this area just started in 2015? How have we come this far without it? In like from the start, how we, <coughs> how we operated without it? If that was like an ABC, was like a no-brainer. How did you operate without it to the I point mean, of this 2015? I mean, I would, I would many say, years old? with the little I know about judicial history in Nigeria, which obviously is based on what people have told me, older people, I would say that it hasn't been so much of a problem until now in how right. it's practiced. And I'll explain in, in two ways. Think about this. Right. Even if a law says something, 
Okay, so the way they are practicing financial autonomy now does not conclusively say that there's judicial corruption or interference in judicial affairs. It just suggests that there could be judicial inter there could be interference by the executive. It just means that the executive will hold on to monuments and judiciary and use that money as a bargaining chip to get favors. Right. It doesn't say that that is what is happening. So I suspect that up until now, it hasn't been glaring that there's been manipulation. Now that the manipulation is glaring, as right. we saw in the appointment of the judges in federal, high, federal, the FCT high courts and all these other courts where we held this gist, people are starting to say we must disconnect all the pipelines that help the executive and legislature interfere with the judiciary. So it is now that it's become a topical issue. Yes, a topical issue, m manifestly imperative. So I think that's what makes it different. And let me even say something else. I think that what is missing from this strike, what is missing from these actions is the courage of the judiciary. Is it? Courage of the judiciary. Jusun is judicial staff, judiciary staff of Nigeria. They're not judges. They are not the ones who ultimately are being clamored for when you talk about independence of judiciary. It's the judges we are clamoring for. Right. In certain states of this country, let me not mention this where they kidnapped me. <laughs> judges have, in meetings, with the, in, in the Jusun meetings, sat on the side of the governors. <laughs> Do you understand me? You are the one we are clamoring for, but you are on the side of the governors. And this brings me back to a point. In England, in, I think it was the 15th century, I may be wrong, maybe 17th or 16th century, there's a case called the Pichams case where they had this judicial independence issue. And the reason why they had it there, I discussed with you my elders, because they had an, the England still has an awaiting constitution till date. So all these things about judicial powers with the courts is not in English constitution. It is known to them by practice. So they had all these problems, I mean, validly. They didn't have it written down. We have it written down, we should be having these problems. But back then, the kings created king's courts, king's bench and whatnot. And in that Picham's case, the judges of the King's Bench were approached. Four of them were approached for opinions on whether that was somebody that was treason. Now, it was a clear case of the king trying to convict somebody of treason when he wasn't really treason. They approached the four judges independently, asking them, is this treason or not? And the four judges independently gave their opinions. Three of them, obviously, at the king's who said it was treason. The fourth judge, I think it was Edward Cook, CJ, mm -hmm. said it wasn't treason, and he was removed and excluded from judiciary for 25 years because of what he said. Now, for him at that time to make those statements, in fact, he didn't just say that it wasn't treason. He said it wasn't treason that the manner in which they approached the judges was wrong. How can you go to us independently, privately? You should come to us as a court. They removed him and there was a statement saying that let his removal serve as a lesson to all the judges that they serve at the pleasure of the king. That was England back then. Right. The reason why things changed and why all of this is documented is because the judiciary had the courage to stand up for independence. As a matter of fact, this event happened before all the separation of powers topics you know, checks and balances you know, were discussed by people like Baron Montesquieu and Blackstone. This is history. So if they have the liberty to say we had these problems because we didn't have an unwritten constitution then, and they have colonized us, they have given us independence. We have stripped ourselves of their influence by becoming a republic. And we have a written constitution that says judiciary is separate. We should not be having these issues here at all. What the judges must do, I know they will say it's unbecoming of a judge to be seen protesting. <laughs> well, in, in, in Calabar, I've been cross river. Magistrates carry placards. Maybe they too should carry placards. <laughs> and I asked, if the, if the, if the, and this is the thing, we must show courage. If the executive withholds funds due to the legislature, to the, to the senators, would they protest to, would they go on strike to, or would they impeach the president? Hmm. What would they do? Are we all going to start begging when we have powers to do what would bring change? They must show some courage. Right. Um, <laughs> and that's interesting, like, the case you just brought forth, and, you know, for me, it's always like, it's just a problem with, with the society, like with the people in the Correct. Like, I mean, because if something so basic as independence of the judiciary, it, it shouldn't even be a debate as to mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. this is for. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So imagine if there's some place, I don't even care where it is, I don't, I don't want to know where, <laughs> where any judge or judges are against something that, you know, 
fosters the independence of the judiciary. That's just telling us what I always say. Mm -hmm. It's like, what holds back this country is personal interest. Correct. Simply yes. personal interest. Every single problem for me comes from nobody looks at the bigger picture of like, oh, Nigeria. It's like me. Do you understand? Because I would assume any judge that people would only, a judge would only do that or people would only go that way if they have personal interest. Like, mm -hmm. it works for them if, you know, do you understand? And so it's just, I don't even know how to say where the problem is from at this point because how do you even start? Like, this is something so basic and first of all, as an ABC, just a simple thing, like, the judiciary should be independent. We are not going against the fact that it is not. Mm -hmm. And then we still have to battle the fact that in the judiciary. God. So, ju you know, they don't even recognize that it's for their own good. You I, see, think the, 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 I don't the, think it's, it's, it's for I, everybody's I think good. It's that complicated. I just think people, it's personal interest. Yes. Uh, but just, if, that's what I'm saying. If they recognize that it's for their own good as governors, as people, they would implement it. If we, if we continue to have the risk of the judiciary serving at the pleasure of the executive, the day, for instance, Governor Samulu leaves office and PDP takes over, they will prosecute him on the will of the existing governor. Mm. PDP will put him in a dock and convict him of offenses that he did not commit because PDP will tell the judge, if you don't convict this man, I won't give you money for paying your staff. I won't give you money for brand new Prado. The judiciary's independence is to even protect the people who are in power. So when they leave, they will not be subject to the whims and caprices of whoever takes over after them. Mm. Think about it. Buhari is president now, for instance. If the judiciary is not independent, he can dock good luck Jonathan, and they can give a judgment in one day. Mm. That's the fact of the matter. <laughs> when Buhari guarantees an independent judiciary today, if he's docked for crimes he did not commit, that judiciary that will be independent will acquit him. Right, so that's, that's the thing. Crimes did not commit. But they all commit crimes. <laughs> you true, true, they all commit crimes. true. And it is from that, because they know these things, mm -hmm. that they would just rather, while I'm in control, let me be in control. Mm. Do you understand? And yes. always, it's because you, you know, if there's a, I, I think if there was a person in power who was totally honest, you'd have, you'd have no problems with doing that. You get, like, the government would not even have. It will, it will be a big deal. So their strategy is to hold on to power forever. Yeah, do you yes. do you which brings me back to my point of these people are very intelligent. No, they're not. <laughs> no, no, they're, 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 they're very intelligent in the negative sense. Okay. So they use their intelligence for evil. To destroy. To destroy. <laughs> to steal, to kill, and to destroy. <laughs> yes. Oh, uh, because. Because you see a situation, first of all, they are very myopic also, mm -hmm. because they only think of when they are in power at the moment. And like you said, what happens if another party comes into power? So, but what happens if another party comes into power? It's simple. Mm -hmm. They join that party. <laughs> uh, uh, they change uh, uh, clothes. Uh, uh, uh. They become... Yeah, I was going yes, to say that. Like, they just, you know, like the party thing in Nigeria for me, yes. it's an illusion for me. They just the same group of people. The same I, I group agree, of people you, rotating. Honestly, I agree with you, know. So I, it's hard to fall to that. How many times do you see, in like, probably the US, someone that was Republican is now Democratic or stuff like that? But mm -hmm. in Nigeria, it's like, as, as, as so as soon as PDP, PDP comes one back, time, APC, one APC time, will switch over again. It's PDP. Combined, they and combined then combined the, it. It's like a group of... Yes, the, so they'll continue to use the judiciary however they like because they're back in power mm -hmm. just under a different name i mean i just feel for clients and i feel for lawyers who are yes. you know. and that's one thing i wanted to point out yes. like so we see a lot of these things happen in the country one, one thing that scares me in the country is like this detachment from the seriousness of situations mm. it's like this um we are so used to we can't kill ourselves it's like a doctor and you know Bef probably before you started practicing, like when you're about death, like you're sad and so. I feel like after like 10 years of practice or five you years of practice, death is nothing to you. Do you understand? I think that's the state Nigerians are in. Like we don't begin to, like right now, and I, 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 it's not like I blame Nigerians, but it's just, so when people say, oh, judiciary is on strike, <laughs> oh well, doctors are on strike. Nobody sees the effect of that. Judiciary is on, um, doctors are on strike. Nobody calculates the fact that if they're on strike for one week, that's a lot of lives lost. Yes. If they're on strike for a month, that's a lot of lives lost. Do you understand? The judiciary, for example, we are just on a strike. I'm sure the average person is like, just on a strike. Like, mm -hmm. For them, it's just like, you know, asshole. 
mm. strike all the time. They don't understand the effect of, and this is like, and that's the most painful thing. Like, I don't think we've had this level of insecurity uh, that we have now in a long time. Like the average person, stuff can just happen to you. Like this is, so, and this is the period where everybody is almost, like there's almost this consensual sense of that the police is ineffective. They don't yeah. operate correctly. Yes. Right, yeah. <laughs> um, coming off end stars and everything, like it's almost like there's no police. You can get robbed anywhere. It's like there's no security is extremely high, and this is now the same period in which you know. And like, so the question for me really is, I mean, you, you a lot of times like you, you could see stuff like, for example, you saying like, I think there's like usually a detachment between people in power, and even you know, like functionality and how things should go. It's like <coughs> what you said, for example, about the effect of what they are doing. That it's like almost you, you ask yourself, do they even know that this is the effect that this will bring? Do, do the people in power even know? And that's one thing that concerns me. Because, for example, and it's a problem. We are lawyers, right? We spend five years in the university. We pay for law school, spend another year in law school, learning how to practice. Why? Because you know, when it comes to division of power. Our job is to is it interpre interpret or implement the law and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You understand? And then, you know, we come out and we just see this dystopian sort of functionality in the entire thing. And the question is, why is it why is there so much responsibility on us interpreting? To go through so much learning. Mm. What's wrong with people to creating like people drafting the law? For me, like what, what does it take to comp compete and become someone in to join the legislature? What's What's the requirement? If you know school so and so mm -hmm. you get, and you know, it's it's not to like go against anything or look down on anybody, but there needs to be a certain level of understanding for how understanding for how institutions work. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? The person interpreting, so that's just like just one arm of the government is actually giving like an intense requirement to function. You are not going to do school mm, I feel you. and become a lawyer or a judge. Or you become a judge. Mm -hmm. There's a certain level of education and understanding you'd have amassed to get to that level. It doesn't apply to the other areas. But, but it's, it's because it's because your function is perhaps the most critical. That's why. And I mean, and let, 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 me, let, 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 let me piggyback on the point you are trying to make. Right. The point you are trying to make is that there should be a more stringent requirement for them to get to those offices. Executive and legislation. Good. But then, you know, when a minimum standard is prescribed, you don't have to stick by the minimum standard. Again, it falls back to these citizens, and it's us. The people we choose to appoint as our reps over our constituencies is left to us. Do you understand? Yes. If I was going to contest for a certain position in my local government or in my, sorry, my constituency, I would explain to them that this is what the legislature is about. This is why, as a lawyer, I'm better than the next man who just has a school cert. Would they understand me? Will they because of that vote for me? That's the question. No, but I'm saying because we know that based on that, it's it's always going to allow. There is so a why governor. Can't just be there's, a requirement? there's a governor who is a life bencher, who has not <laughs> implemented financial autonomy. <laughs> Does that answer your question? So it even if you even if you put stringent requirements, really, it, just it doesn't change anything. His wife is is not she's not a judge. What's she? But he is a live bencher. You can Google it. I'm not mentioning names, but he can hear me. I think he's the one that carried the court last during the pandemic. But he's a live bencher. One single advocate of Nigeria, he has not implemented the financial autonomy. At least I know one single advocate of Nigeria, this financial autonomy. That one was the one spraying dollar notes in public, a crime. All the governors have 36 attorney generals of their states who are supposed to advise them. None of them had adv have advised them to immediately implement financial autonomy. So what are we saying? And this is the same Nigeria where governors are, became governors because of the Supreme Court. You have taken benefit of judiciary, but you refuse to support judiciary. So I mean, in the light I just of feel for lawyers. Nobody's eating. We're hungry. Yes. That's what I, I do. That's my work. <laughs> The average man on the street who, is, who needs simple Of course, bill, like people are obviously affected. You know, I mean, for clients, obviously, for big commercial clients, probably considering arbitrations now, you know, settling the dispute out of court. Yes. But for smaller people, criminal cases, there's not so much you can do about it. Hmm. For lawyers who don't have all these big ticker cases, 
people are going hungry. That's why people are drafting their own tenancy <laughs> agreements. <laughs> <and> <laughs> Well, they don't. The, the, I mean, in light of this Jusun <laughs> strike and this entire issue, do you possibly have any recommendations on how moving forward these things can Yes, we know. Let me tell you how we can move forward. People are courageous. That's the only way. That's why right. I mentioned the Patreon's case. Somebody, you would die. That's the point. You will, somebody <laughs> will die. Somebody will lose his life. Somebody will get kidnapped. Somebody will get detained. By the time it goes on and on and on and on, there will be a, there will be a clear case for independence to happen. It's. It's just the way it works. Oh, sorry, didn't that already happen with the whole protest? Uh -huh. Nobody died now. People Judges did not die. <laughs> when Honorable <laughs> Justice said, ah, yes, they do. <laughs> why, did Boy, why did you tell Boy, tell the shepherd to talk to Boy? Why did they kill oh, our brother? Okay, so you mean like people in... <laughs> yes, between, in, 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 in the high ups of the high ups, they need to stop colluding to rip the Nigerian people. They need to speak to each other and understand this. Well. See, when Tank, let Tanku go and walk into Boy's office and explain to him, let Justice Aluba. Honorable Lord Justice, walking into Sanwulu's office and Sanwulu cannot deny Aluba his presence. He cannot be convicted of a crime, but he can be detained if he wants to be detained. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. just a joke. But the point is that the big men need to speak to the big men. Jusun is headed by the chief registrar. Where he, who is the chief registrar? The chief registrar can't even speak to me. I mean, I heard the lawyer's voice. If the chief registrar speaks to me about a matter that goes on in court, I won't listen to him. Chief registrars and speak to the registrars under them. The judges have to speak to the governors. They are on par True. by all standards. The judiciary has a power to compel the executive to do what they cannot do. It's called the order of mandamus. There's so much that can be said and done. This is not this is not a matter for courts anymore. Experience. It's a matter for discussion, and the discussion that must happen at the highest level. If they take us seriously enough. To find a solution, they just don't take us seriously enough. If they also take themselves or the state seriously, they don't take anything seriously enough. They don't. If they did, won't be here. It's a matter of discussions. It's a matter of why not. Why not? What's like? What exactly? Why is this so difficult? The money is budgeted already. So why is it so difficult to move the money directly to who it's supposed yes. to go to? You want to take ten percent for what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, <sighs> right, um, I mean, there it is. Um, I guess it's the people that need to fight are the ones that I refuse to fight, and they are the ones that we are fighting for in the first place. Yeah, yeah. you know, you're my like nice to spoke about how we think lawyers should, you know, um, should reposition themselves in this time because it's very important. And I, and even right, though, so let's just say that, yeah, yeah, I mean, your man should speak money, but even though that, even though I frown against some practices like appearances for lawyers. That's getting paid by 5K when you appear in court, yes. which is not what big firms do. I understand that this is the practice across the country. So a lawyer who earns only when he shows up in court has not been able to earn money for one full month. Right. It's quite sad, you know. So there must be alternatives. Do you mind me having Jeff? Do you want to say something? Okay, I so guess. I think this is where the MBA can also <coughs> um, play a significant role. Yeah. There are so many positions in the country that belong or let me not say that belong, but there are so many positions that were created for lawyers to handle. Mm -hmm. To, but we we have a system where pretty much anybody. Going back to what I said earlier about the tenancy, mm -hmm. normally it's a lawyer that you draft it. But today we have roadside agents who. <laughs> it's it's really funny because even as a lawyer, if you want to rent a house, you you may be compelled to pay a roadside agent because yeah. the landlord won't listen to, oh, I'm yeah, a lawyer. And that's interesting because, uh, I f in fact, I feel like that's another topic entirely. Yes. yes. Right, because, you know, <laughs> I've, I've had someone send, send me, like, a contract to review. And I'm like, what, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, it was a partnership agreement. I'm like, what, what, who wrote that? And I sent it back, like, bro, they who wrote it this? Right? Oh, the per person was trying to start a business with, Drafted it himself. Probably Googled, wrote something to Google, exactly. and it was just absolute trash. I'm like, this is just nonsense. Like, why would you even? <laughs> and so, like, in fact, this. So that's the thing about this old stuff. It's like the entire nation is like, it, mm -hmm. it's like there's the need for correction of mentality. Like, yes. people don't even understand how necessary it is. Like, oh, I need to get a lawyer for this thing. Mm -hmm. Even if they can afford it, like, oh, let me just do this thing. Everybody is always trying to cut, cut corners yeah yes. cut corners and that's like it's like a general mentality it's like you're not wise 
we are not cutting corners. Mm. And that's why lawyers are, s- are like a lot of lawyers are going through it this period mm-hmm. because if the MBA and if us we ourselves um, had put had like put our foot down to ensure that the things that the standards that lawyers are supposed to set in certain areas of the society if we had actually maintained those mm-hmm. and not leave it to um, you can call them hoodlums hoodlums or yes. bandits <laughs> and not leave it to hoodlums or bandits <laughs> to <laughs> take over today we wouldn't really be having mm. even if the courts are shut down would still have people will still rent houses I've worked too. people will still have um draft agreements people will still do all these things but when we just focus on one area of law apart from a lot of law firms that um, engage in commercial practice Mm -hmm. the average everyday lawyer is just about going probably 99 percent yes 99 percent is oh go to court appearance fee um, may, may i my lord may i and that that can only get you so far as we've seen in this case so in a situation where the the courts are shut down what happens to you so i think apart from um taking our rightful position in society um we also have individual uh, individual work we need to do so you can also advance your skills you can also advance your knowledge i i understand that now well I've been to a couple. The MBA organizes trainings for lawyers. Mm. And you can, who knows, you could pick up an interest in a particular area of law, start talking more about it on social media, start posting about it on yeah, LinkedIn. But I mean, like, I feel like those things are, those things are easier said than done. I mean, for someone who doesn't even have any attachment to, like, a law firm, now I can mm-hmm. imagine, like, these things are not just... And I get what you're saying. I, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, it makes sense. And... Oh, <sighs> such a difficult um like a lot of these things when it comes to actually doing it like and you know using it to survive they just don't appear the same and that's why like we see the battle for you know personal interest and like people then start doing things mm-hmm. that they rather not do, and just like selling of the country and everything and I, and I think like for me one interesting thing that is happening now is like you know the advent of tech and stuff like that okay the, you know the <coughs> possibilities of that being an engine for you know creating like a whole new market where lawyers can assess and yes. but i feel like that's just another topic entirely mm-hmm. to be very honest like dissecting that and deconstructing deconstructing like what we have to do personally mm-hmm. as lawyers in in, in, those in light of these situations and i mean i think for me one thing i would just add is that i think you know i'm a crusader of all time through this resolution i think that this is the time where we need to be honest to ourselves as lawyers obey our rpc and see but there are disputes that don't need to be in courtrooms that sure. settled outside. People say arbitration is expensive. It's expensive because you want to hire a Mrs. Funke Adekoya SAN or a Mr. Yemi Kant Johnson SAN or a Mr. Tunde Fagbundu SAN. Maybe this is when we have to start saying to ourselves, okay, you must client and if his client have a dispute, let's hire Kunle, but let's make sure that we hold him accountable for every step of the process. Kunle will right. take XXX amount of money and the client will have dispute resolved in three months. We must learn to respect the decisions of arbitrators and move on. Maybe mm-hmm. if we did that over the next couple of weeks when the strike continues, we would then learn to do what is right and advise our clients properly. I think this will open up a new um, earning area for lawyers. Mm-hmm. Uh, or let's use mediation. Let's or even mediation. Yes. Or even negotiation. Write letters to the people you, are, you have disputes against. Let's settle it. Let them understand the advantage of doing settlement as opposed to going through a full court proceedings. And you know, everything just works better. Um, I was going to make make a final point that I just just slips my mind now. But I mean, ultimately, this is the case. Um, yeah, I was going to say the bigger arbitrators will handle international arbitration, but domestic arbitration has always been a grassroots thing. It's always a down to earth thing. Not all cases have to go to court. And if your client's case is in court today, and it cannot be, you, you can't proceed with it, and you need to proceed with it. Maybe reach out to the other party and tell the other party you want to settle. They don't want to settle amicably. Proposed arbitration, I mean, I would agree to arbitration if the terms are right, right. anytime, any day. The only reason people don't agree to arbitration again is because... Well, literally delving into another topic entirely. Uh, mm-hmm. That's why I'm smiling, because <laughs> people know they have no defense to your case, so they want to keep you in court and delay you True. forever and ever and True. ever. So again, we are our own problem. Right. We're back here again, you know. So, <laughs> But I think ultimately we must be honest with ourselves. If our profession will progress, 
then if our progression, if our profession, if our country, our society will progress, then we must act in good faith. We must show moral courage. We must show exemplary stand to live in. And we must put our, ourselves out there and make sure that what is right is done. Mm -hmm. This not just goes to me and you, but to our governors, our ages, our chief judges, our judges. Mm -hmm. Can't stay silent. It's just, it's just I was talking. I was talking to solve anything. And it was another thing <coughs> like this is probably one of the most religious countries. And that simple moral code to just do the right thing is very absent. Well but like I mean <laughs> <laughs> in light of the topic in terms of the judiciary and the Jusun <laughs> strike, I don't know what we'll be able to do than to reveal to you bigger problems. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I think that's what we'll be able to do. Just reveal to you how messed up a lot of things are. And you know, the reason why this strike is actually detrimental because I feel like a lot of people don't really understand that I just juice what's was juice on. and then you know um th so this, w this is what judiciary is dealing with and this the situation um we hope you know by the end of this fiasco um things will actually be solved and it's not like in like <laughs> 2025 like is coming. Mm. <laughs> 2025 <laughs> we'll now come back and say ah the strike in 2015 the lander strike in 2021 <laughs> and now the lander strike in 2025 or 2027 and we just hope um it's hard not to sigh as a Nigerian it's really hard um, it was really nice having you, you man. Nice having you once again, Ife. Thank you um, very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening. I'll see you on the next episode. Yeah.